This lesson deals with designing regulated power supplies. You can find these notes in the ECE302 ebook in chapter two, starting on page 76. This first design example was a circuit that I designed many years ago because my son was using a CD player in our car and wearing out the batteries. This is a very old example and really probably isn't relevant anymore, but it has a lot of interesting ideas in it in terms of what are called maximums and minimums in a design. And we'll see these in all kinds of electronic circuits. And it's working with these kind of extreme values that require a really good understanding of how a circuit works. I took a Sony Discman player, it used two AA batteries. I want to design a power supply to basically replace these two AA batteries. I took some measurements on the CD player and I found that when it was playing music, it was drawing about a quarter of an amp, or 250 milliamps. And then when it was seeking a song, it was speeding up the motor, the current peaked at about half an amp. Plugging this into a car, the voltage in the car varies depending on what accessories are on or off and whether the car itself is on or off. The most you'd probably see in a car when it's running is about 14 volts and if the battery were pretty much run down, it'd be about 10 volts. I wanted this CD player to work under all conditions. I had a 1N5333 Zener diode, which is a five watt unit. It has a 3.3 volt Zener voltage at a measured current of 20 milliamps. You can think of this as sort of the minimum current in the Zener diodes. If I had this much current, I could be guaranteed I'd have this voltage across the Zener. So let's even take those specifications and put them on our schematic of the Zener regulator we talked about in our last video. Got a resistor, a Zener diode, having two AA batteries and a fully charged AA battery. It says it's one and a half volts, but it's closer to 1.65 volts. This 3.3 is a good choice of Zener. This isn't a resistor, this is simply my CD player drawing a minimum current and then drawing a maximum current and then some values in between. My voltage source is somewhere between 10 volts and 14 volts. And I'd like to pick this resistor so that this circuit works under all these conditions. I want to pick the resistor R such that the output's 3.3 volts under all conditions. And I want to specify the power ratings for the parts in my circuit so they don't burn out. I have a 3.3 volt Zener diode with a specified current for a guaranteed voltage. Let's consider that to be our minimum value, which we also call I sub BV in our VI characteristics. Now what a minimum Zener current occur? From our analysis back on page 75, it occurs when the load current is the maximum. Remember that the Zener and the load are sharing a current with the resistor R. What's the current in the resistor R? Let me go around the loop. The rise in voltage is the battery voltage is equals the current in the resistor times the resistor plus the Zener voltage. Could solve for the current, it's going to be the battery voltage minus 3.3 over R. In other words, one node voltage minus another divided by R. I need to ask, what is the smallest value this is going to take on? Because this has to supply these two currents. Well, the smallest value here will be when this battery is its smallest value. What's the current in a resistor? Well, it's the Zener current plus the output current. How big does I sub R need to be? Well, minimally, we need to supply the current to the Zener enough to keep it going, which is I sub Z minimum and the maximum to the load. So we can now can solve for the resistor. 10 volts would be our minimum battery value minus the Zener voltage divided by R, and that would have to equal the least amount of current in the Zener and the most in the load. We can solve for the value of R. This is 520 milliamps. So we can put that over here, bring the R over here, and that turns out to be 12.88 ohms. What is the current in the resistor maximum? We're looking at actually the minimum value here. Well, the maximum current would be when the battery is at its maximum value, which is 14 volts. Subtracting the Zener voltage divided by our resistor of 12.88, we get 830.7 milliamps. The power dissipated in the resistor is going to be the voltage times the current, the voltage squared divided by the resistance, or the current squared times the resistance. So here's the biggest value we would have, and that would give us the most power dissipated in the resistor, and that would define its wattage rating. That turned out to be 8.9 watts. That's a physically very large resistor and would get quite hot actually. We'll learn how to calculate temperature in semiconductors later in the course. Now what about the current in the Zener diode? What's the maximum value it's gonna take on? Well, the Zener diode current is the resistor current minus the output current. The maximum Zener current occurs when I have the maximum current in the resistor and the minimum in the load. That's gonna be the 830.7 milliamps minus the 250 or 580.7 milliamps. For a Zener diode, there's no I squared R because it's just a voltage source, so it's going to be the voltage times the current. 3.3 volts, and the biggest current I would get would give me 1.92 watts. I did pick a 5 watt Zener, so I'm definitely below that limit. 
And with any specifications, especially when someone else tells you something, just stand back and think a little bit about the design. In this case, I didn't really think about the case of shutting off the CD player. If I shut off the CD player, this term goes to zero, and then I wind up getting all of this current into the Zener. So if I take 830 milliamps times the 3.3, at 2.74 watts. That would be the true worst case. This was the worst case given the design specs I created. In either case though, we have our wattage ratings much greater than what our circuit's gonna experience. Earlier in the chapter, we looked at designing a power supply and found that it had quite a bit of ripple in the output. That's really totally unacceptable for audio circuits. That ripple will go through the amplifier in the circuit and show up in the output. So we need to reduce that ripple dramatically. Let's put a Zener diode regulator across the load and we can smooth things out. Our design was based upon having a resistive load, r sub L, and the value of r sub L was the average voltage divided by the average current. Now we're gonna insert between the load and the filter capacitor our regulator, which has got an R sub S and a Zener diode. If we maintain the same average voltage and average current, we'll maintain the same ripple. We can then solve for the resistor R sub S by the fact that this current is the difference of these two node voltages divided by R sub S. Let's add a regulator to our design on page 47. Let's use a low power Zener that's 12 volts and maybe has a minimum current of one milliamp. My average voltage was 16.95 and the average current was 16.95 milliamps. In other words, we had a 1K load. This resistor now is gonna be the difference of these two node voltages, 16.95 minus 12, divided by the current of 16.95. They get 292 ohms. Near a standard resistor would be 300. Formulas in designing our power supplies were approximations. Before we commit to building it, it might be best to simulate it. You'll also build one of these in the ECE303 lab. Let's take our design from page 47. Let's add this resistor and Zener diode. And then our value of resistance was 292 ohms. And our Zener diode is a standard diode definition, but now we're gonna specify a breakdown voltage and a breakdown current. In this case, 12 volts and one milliamp. As far as the capacitor goes, we're trying to recreate the DC ratio. And so we should have about the same ripple. Let's see what we get. The maximum here is 18.295. What we had back on page 47 was 18.305. The minimum here is 15.891. We had 15.889. The difference of those two here is 2.404. And on page 47, it was 2.416. So pretty much the same ripple. What I have to worry about though, is the minimum value here is that greater than the regulated voltage. Because if this dips below it, then the regulator will shut off. There is a peak to peak here also. And the difference is pretty small and the average value is 12.0325. The little bit of rippling here is because there's effectively some resistance in the Zener diode. There's about 51 millivolts peak to peak of ripple. Sort of looks like the Zener diode's like a six ohm resistor. Let's check the current in the Zener diode, see whether the minimum is enough to keep our Zener operating at 12 volts. This is like the last example we did with the CD player. If you think about the ripple in the power supply as being a range of values of the output voltage from the filter capacitor, we're going from 15.9 to 18.3. Let's even calculate the minimum current in the Zener diode. Now here, the only variable I got is this one right here. What's the smallest value this current can have? Well, it's gonna be when the battery is the smallest because we're gonna take this battery here, a 15.9 minus the 12 divided by the 292, that's the current in here. And then the load is constant. It's just gonna be 12 volts divided by 1K. So if you subtract that off, what's left over is going into the Zener, and that's 1.356 milliamps. We do have enough current to get the Zener past what we call its knee, so that we get a fairly constant voltage across the load. One other note, I've been marking points on the graphs with one of the features in the PSPICE program, and I'm gonna stop doing this in most examples from here on out. And the reason is that this picture, when I put it in the size of a frame, moves these things around a lot. It's quite a bit of editing to get this to look nice. So I'm gonna be marking just with a pencil the values that are here, but I'm actually reading them with a the cursor. But I wanted to illustrate this is possible with the program. And it's very handy when you're trying to make reports to make it look nice. And these are examples of regulated power supplies.